Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. This is a video about the seaplane rides in the Maldives. So this clip is from the Malay airport when we were originally taking off. So just to warn you, this flight is very crowded, very small. Masks were required because we were there in summer of 2021. And, um, but I cannot emphasize enough how hot it is. We had just recently gotten off of a very long flight. So I was wearing leggings and a, like a long t-shirt, like a long, not t-shirt, but a long shirt. Do not recommend that outfit. Change into some shorts, save yourself, put your hair up, be comfortable. This clip jumps into our return flight back into Malé. So I thought it was kind of cool just to see a lot of the buildings. At one point you could see some of the military infrastructure that they have. Uh, I always love just seeing that beautiful water. And there are lots of seaplanes. The wait was not very long anytime we were getting to our seaplane or leaving. And there's lots of shuttles, which I'll walk you through that process in just a minute. I was much more prepared with my outfits this time. Uh, shorts and a tank top. And yeah, it's... A fun ride that landing is kind of freaky you can kind of like feel yourself dropping a bit you can hear a lot of the alarms going off saying hey if you're not close to water at this point you should get close to water because you're falling out of the sky but there's no door in the cockpit so it was really neat to see all the gauges see the pilots and we really enjoyed just the whole experience it's definitely a completely different experience from flying on commercial or private flights like i've done before so I really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy this video of learning a little bit about the process of going through customs and flights in the Maldives. We are on the next step of the journey at the Malay Airport and it is one of the buses. So it's a Trans Maldivian Airways transportation bus that takes you from like a little waiting area, cafe with a little souvenir shop. So what I'm assuming is going to be airline check-in, possibly customs. Or it's kind of along for the ride. I think it'll be airline check-in. Yeah, no one's really telling us anything, but it seems to all be well handled. And anytime there's like a decision to go right or left, there's someone there waiting us the direction to go. So it's a little bit of a journey by faith right now. But you are with a group, so you're not like just two people wandering around. But I mean, we don't know anyone else in this group. We know they came from the resort we came from. So. That's the adventure. So one thing we didn't mention is at this point you're only carrying your carry-on to check bag or handle by train. You can barely see it. We're taking the bus from the seaplane area right now. You can barely see it over the wall, but there are huge, huge waves. I've read that on the weekends a lot of the locals would go to the beach. Now I'm not aware if that's true or if it takes this particular beach, but wow, those waves were massive. Formed some beautiful tunnels at one point. This is one of the famous bridges that connected two islands together. It's the only bridge that actually connects two islands. But something they built in an effort to uh, assist with the overpopulation because they're having people from a lot of the outer islands to the main islands due to erosion on the other islands and they're afraid that in the next 40 years some of them won't even exist. So in order to help with commuting and population density, they built that bridge. And there's part of the other city. You can see the Coca-Cola factory over there. Next up, someone from your resort should meet you, help you get your luggage, and direct you to the correct place to go based on where your connecting flight is. 
and I'll have to put the phone away for a minute. Uh, we're gonna go through some health screenings and as you can see, everybody's still wearing their masks, they're required. Excuse my just no makeup and messy hair. As I mentioned, the seaplane is crazy hot. Uh, so once you get your checked bag at the Malay airport, you um, there's a couple of shops, but it's really just like perfume, cell phones, and a bank. So then you go through security. And before you go through security, obviously customs and stuff get changed, so I would check online. But you need your QR code already filled out for immigration for the Maldives. And you need your passport out. Did we need that yet? Yeah. Yeah. So then you go through security. Very simple. Don't have to take anything out of your bag. Don't have to take your shoes off. You need to remove like everything out of your pockets and take your belts off. You go through a metal detector. Good to go. Then you go to your ticket counter, check in for your airline, and then you go through customs. Uh, so you'll need your QR code and passport for that. Checking in at your airline, we needed our passport and PCR codes and some paperwork but two of the three of those are strictly based on our destination being America. And obviously all of those standards change quite frequently. So just check uh, with your airline and with the countries you're flying to and through. Then you go through security again. It's basically the exact same protocol. And after that, you're in the airport. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's very few things. There's a few duty-free shops, your typical alcohol cigarettes. Uh, they even had Cubans. They were just sold out. I just thought that was interesting. Um, there's a few places to get like some coffee and have a quick lunch. Nothing crazy. Like Dairy Queen was closed. Burger King was open. And there's coffee shops that have some pastries and some like pad thai and stuff like that. But not a whole lot. There were a couple of high-end shops, but honestly, I looked through them and I was not impressed. Um, it's very empty. Let me show you. We are two hours out from departing. Less than one. Less than two hours out from departing. Yep. Just out of privacy, I'm not going to keep scanning because there would be one person I would show you. I was unable to capture footage of the rest of the airport because it there were just a lot of people and it was just very fast paced. But the process after, like once it gets closer to time for you to board, everybody lines up just like they do at every other airport. And then you, they scan your tickets and you show your passport to board another bus. You take that bus over to the plane and then you board the plane directly take stairs from the runway I guess not the runway but um, from the open air concrete area you don't go to another building you board the plane right there the bus is extremely crowded the and then boarding the plane is crowded just like boarding any other commercial flight uh, it's obviously a very large plane, so there's multiple buses. First class does get to go first and on their own, in their own area. Everyone else, it, you're just, it's just like herding cattle. And you get right onto the plane, then you get to your seats and get settled in for your flight. Our flight was to Dubai, so only about four hours, I believe. And then in Dubai is where, when you're boarding your next flight, is where you actually go through U.S. Customs. We found this to be very odd because we had quite the layover. So we had a hotel room. We ate a couple of meals in the airport. And then we go through checking our tickets and PCR codes. Totally fine. And we are at our gate. Go went through the first section of checking our boarding passes and everything. And then we go to another waiting area. And then as we're going down the escalator to that waiting area, we see U.S. Customs. So the difference between Malé and U.S. Customs are very, very different. So in Malé, we had multiple like cans of coffee and Coke and water. Uh, 
you can take everything through, but then once you go through U.S. Customs, it is the typical uh, one quart size bag, three ounce bottles, all the general rules. So you can't take bottles of water or anything else through, which I think was frustrating for a lot of people. We had to throw a lot of stuff out. Um, other people were throwing a lot out as well because anything you bought in the airport, you could not take onto the flight. And there was nowhere to purchase water or snacks after U.S. Customs before boarding the flight for the U.S., which was pretty disappointing because I like to take a bottle of water and a bottle of soda on with me, and you could not do that. I honestly would have paid 20 bucks for a Coke at that point. I just wanted to have something to drink on the flight without having to constantly ask for small cups, and unfortunately, there was just no way to do that, and so we had to ask a lot on the flight, which they were very nice about. I just felt bad that you have to keep asking because it was about a 14 or 15 hour flight and you just had no way of taking any drinks on with you. Obviously, you can take the snacks that you had purchased on, but no drinks. And from that point, it's just all your standard U.S. customs that you're we're used to with TSA, no aerosols and things of that nature. But thank you so much for watching my video. The rest of the video are just clips of us moving off from various islands or landing at various islands because we didn't have a direct flight from Mali to our island. We stopped at a couple of other resorts along the way, which I was like, hey, let's enjoy this experience. Who knows if we'll ever be on a seaplane again. And we were on it for about 45 minutes each way. So an hour and a half round trip between arrival and departure. A lot of people were sleeping on the flight. Uh, you feel very safe. It's just kind of crowded and hot. There's some little fans. I would recommend sitting as far forward as you can because then you're closer to the fans and you can see the cockpit, which was pretty cool. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please like this video. Comment if you have any questions or anything else to say. And subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.